If you're a web developer, you've probably heard of Udemy. You may have even built a project or two using one of their courses. But are these projects okay to put in your web developer portfolio? Ooh, good question, right? Let's talk about it. Hello? What's up, developers? It's Real Tough Candy back online with you guys today, and I've been getting this question, I mean, fairly frequently, especially since last week when I published a junior developer portfolio review. Check it out, it's popping up on your screen right now if you wanna check out that review. But the question is, in various variations, is it okay to put Udemy projects in my portfolio? Well, I'm gonna give you three good reasons why you shouldn't, but don't, don't, don't. I'm gonna to explain to you how you can kind of beat the system with a few modifications. So let's talk about this. For those of you who may have not heard of Udemy, it's a huge online platform where people can teach you pretty much anything about software, iOS, uh, Android, like mobile stuff, desktop, web, games, you name it. It's all there for the low, low cost of $9.99 or $14.99 or whatever they're charging these days. It's super cheap, okay? And a lot of these mega courses, uh, these web development bootcamp courses especially, have big projects. Colt Steele's Web Developer Bootcamp, which has almost half a million people enrolled, has the capstone project Yelp Camp. This is a full stack application that uses everything from Node to Express to MongoDB. Bootstrap 4, I think, it's been a long time since I've checked it out, but the point is all sorts of technologies under one roof in one project, and these projects take a while to complete. And as you're completing these projects, eventually they start looking pretty good. And you're thinking, well, why not throw it in my portfolio? Like, it looks good. I built it myself. Like, I was coding along with this person. Here's the problem. You and half a million other people have done Yelp Camp. Now, that's not to say a half a million people are going to be applying to the jobs that you're applying to. But recruiters have seen Yelp Camp. Senior developers have seen Yelp Camp. And more and more people who are responsible for hiring decisions are seeing these projects. And as soon as they see these projects, you're not putting yourself ahead of the other candidates. And these hiring managers start seeing patterns and your resume goes whoop right to the back. And that's problem one with putting a Udemy project in your portfolio. You're just gonna be like all of the rest of developers who are putting these things in their portfolio. You may go to an instructor's site and see all the social proof of how such and such student used the projects for their portfolio adhere to the curriculum from A to Z and now they work for IBM. That is seriously great for them. I mean, seriously, like congrats, that's a huge deal. Um, but don't rely on other people's success for you to succeed. Don't rely on other people's luck for you to succeed. These Udemy courses have been out for a few years now, especially the, the developer bootcamp has been out for like three or four years. So it's given recruiters and all these other people, these hiring managers, plenty of time to see the Udemy developer project system. And the minute they smell that, ooh, it smells like a Yelp camp. Ooh, oh, ooh, that smells like Smart Brain from Andre Nego's awesome course. Great course, but I've seen this project way too many times. It's not showing your potential employer that you can solve problems for them and you need to be able to prove to them, I've talked about this so many times, people are super sick of me saying this, but you've got to show your employer you can solve their problems. These problems vary in intensity and frequency. They're kind of like panic attacks. Uh, at work, you may be working on a problem for two weeks, one problem for two weeks. You may be working on 20 problems in one day. But when you submit these Udemy projects, you are not showing your hiring manager or anyone else who sees your portfolio or your resume or your GitHub that you can solve problems. So that is reason number one why you should nix the idea of putting in Udemy projects. Reason number two, now this one has a little more nuance. Let's say you know some people who have submitted Udemy projects and gotten jobs. I mean, I know a few of them, not gonna lie, I know a few of them. I also know hundreds of other people who have submitted uh, Udemy projects in their portfolios and not gotten jobs, but that's beside the point. You may know some people who have gotten jobs that way and say, Candy, come on. Not everyone has seen Yelp Camp. Not everyone has seen Maximilian Schwartzmiller's Node project, okay? And it's pretty banging and it's in my portfolio and I've gotten callbacks and interviews. Okay, that's fair enough. You know, that's fair enough. But here's the problem. When you get called in for an interview, the senior developer sits down and this person has some questions. This senior developer has some questions about how you built this. 
Why did you decide to use MongoDB in this project? What was the rationale behind using Node instead of PHP? You better have a freaking good answer for that because if you have a deer in the headlights look and say, actually that was from a Udemy course, I don't know, I was just following along. You're not gonna get the job. You're not gonna get the callback, you're not gonna get the job, and it's back to square one. This is problem two with putting Udemy courses in your portfolio. You don't have the opportunity to take a look at the architecting. You don't have an opportunity to really understand why such and such instructor is having to use these technologies. Because they're cool? See if that flies in a board meeting. See if that flies with your team meeting when you're planning a new project at your nine to five job. The problem with these code alongs and these projects, as great as they are for practice, as fun as they are to complete, as awesome as they are to show off to people, they do not show you the architecting process, the design process, and the why. That is so important in a real world job, it, whether you're freelancing or doing a nine to five. Your process is where the money is. Anybody can code. Probably even highly trained orangutans can do that. But what they can't do is make decisions, mindful decisions. Why did you choose to use jQuery rather than vanilla JavaScript? Why did you choose to use Node rather than PHP? Why did you choose to use MongoDB rather than MySQL? And if you don't have an answer for that kind of stuff, guys, you just wasted a lot of time and it's really discouraging going to these interviews time and time again and wondering, why didn't I get that call back? If you're putting Udemy projects in your, your portfolio, might be a pretty good reason why you're not. Reason number three why you should avoid putting Udemy projects in your portfolio, there's this little thing called licensing. And if you're doing line for line what your instructor is doing, what your instructor is showing you, it uh, doesn't matter what kind of course it is. It could be a complete bootcamp, it could be Node, it could be whatever language, whatever hot technology, Svelte. I don't care what it is doesn't matter what it is, but if you're putting these projects in your portfolio line for line, you need to check that license because you don't want to be plagiarizing people and a lot of these licenses, this is where you can get in some trouble, like legal trouble, and you don't want to be dealing with that. You're trying to get a job. You're not trying to face litigation. Yeah, well, then let's be, let's be honest, you probably won't, but there's a possibility that you might, and it's just not worth it. You have to make these projects your own. And if you're doing it line by line, you're plagiarizing and you're stealing their work. And if you're not giving credit in your portfolio somewhere to that project, it can get you in some trouble you wish you wouldn't have even touched. Most of these projects are on GitHub. You can, you can download the starter code. Just check the license. Check to see what attributions are needed, uh, when, why, and where. Uh, this is something no one talks about because it's really boring, um, you, at least on YouTube. But licensing is something you need to be very cognizant of when you're doing these projects and passing them off as your own. Because yes, it's open source, but there are some rules. So read the license. There's all kinds of different ones for open source. Uh, one of the most popular ones is MIT. I think that's the most um, permissive one. Uh, but do your research. Don't just listen to me because I don't have the material on hand and I'm just babbling at this point, but read the license and adhere to the standards the license projects. Learn how it works and see where you need to be giving credit where credit is due. Trust me guys, it's just not worth it. You're already under pressure to get a job and make this career work. You don't wanna be dealing with the legal stuff. It's just, it's just not worth it. All that said, you can still put Udemy projects in your portfolio. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to remove Udemy projects out of your life or out of your portfolio. Add a feature. Make these portfolio projects your own. That way you are advancing yourself in front of the pack. You're putting your stamp on this project. Like, yeah, I got inspiration from Andre Negoy from his Smart Brain project, but now it's mine. I put all these different features on it. You get to learn about architecting. You get to learn about project planning. Um, the whole development process and making it your own. And that sense of ownership can take you so far. Uh, just put some little tweaks on it to make it your own. Destroy the CSS and maybe add some less or SAS or uh, refactor the HTML, make it semantic HTML or something. Um, these changes don't have to be life-changing as I've said in other videos. These things don't have to be life-changing, but make it your own. That way too, when you go into the interview and they ask you, okay, 
why did you add such and such authentication this way? Or whatever question they throw at you, you're gonna know. And you can say something like, you know, I explored my options and I decided process ABC was more efficient than process EFG. I mean, that's gonna impress most employers that you did your homework, especially as a junior developer. Uh, it shows them that you're inquisitive, that you're a problem solver, and that you know where to go to get your answers. So that is probably the main way of getting past uh, the Udemy problems is making these projects your own. There's just so many benefits to that. And that takes the burden off trying to find 100% unique projects. It's okay to take ideas from other people. This is open source software and we share ideas all the time. We share our code snippets all the time. We copy and paste from um, Stack Overflow all the time. So that idea of sharing these things and taking these things is okay. Okay. It's when it's, you know, a 20,000 line project and you're taking it line by line and saying it's yours. That's where the problems are. So try to avoid that. Just go into that code base and start making it yours, guys. We all have to start somewhere. And, you know, to do apps, when you've never coded before, to do apps are a big freaking deal. When you've never coded before, a Yelp camp type project is huge. It's a huge project. So they are things to be proud of. And it is okay to put those things in your portfolio with some tweaks, but as soon as you come across a problem that you solved that's more yours, that you can claim as more your own, as soon as you build something from Aunt Lucinda, stick it in that portfolio because there is nothing that will compare with real world projects. It could be as simple as Aunt Lucinda's landing page. Aunt Lucinda needs a date. Think about all the processes that you will go through building that page for Aunt Lucinda, just a simple landing page. You have to do the planning, you have to interview her and ask her some questions about what she wants and what her, what her feature set is, her feature requests. You have to choose the technologies and refine them. You have to refactor the code and all this stuff. And these are things you just don't do, even with the best Udemy instructors. There are some really good instructors out there, but that's the limitation of the Udemy platform and all these online platforms that give you these projects is that they don't let you see the architecting and they don't fill you in as to why these are the best decisions. And you're a decision maker. As a problem solver, you're a, you're a big decision maker. So I hope this video was helpful. I want to hear your thoughts on this. As always, I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.